Hello, Maha. You know, basically, I just walk the grounds. Since uh, I kind of organize the events, I make sure that the property is well kept. You know, so we, we go from security, making sure everything's running right. Basically, just make the rounds, make sure everybody's having fun. This is the Maha Festival. It's a music festival. How could I stand under a tent? <laughs> That's just my pace. When I want to go somewhere, I got to get there. <laughs> I think it's fun. I enjoy it. I love managed chaos. I live for it. Hi, I'm Lisa Bachman. It was January 22nd of 2007. I was 36 years old. Hardworking mother. Playing with the kids. Uh, Eight, you know, work seven to five usually, sometimes six. Come home, make dinner, and then spend the evening with the family. It was just a normal, normal life. I was making dinner. We had spaghetti, I'll never forget that. <laughs> and that was it. We, we finished the dishes and we still had our work clothes on from the day. So we were going to watch a movie with the boys. Uh, my husband and I, Michael, ran upstairs to change, to put our comfies on. I remember running up the stairs, I remember walking into the room and not able to catch my breath. And I got dizzy and then I went down. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I had no idea what was going on. I heard a thud and I didn't know what that was. She just flopped on the bed. I didn't even know what was going on. And then my dad was just screaming, she's not breathing, he's not breathing. I saw her eyes roll back in her head and her eyes were fluttering open and... My brother, he came downstairs and he started yelling, something's wrong with mom. I started screaming on the telephone. She stopped breathing and I just saw her turn purple. She looked at me and then her eyes just rolled back, back in her head and that's when I just, I couldn't, I was in shock. And my best friend, he's my next door neighbor, Nikki, that's his mom, she's a nurse. So I just said, I gotta get her, she's the only one I know. My friend opened the door and I just screamed it. I said, my mom's not breathing, I need help. And she literally just came, she jumped down the stairs. I was up in the bedroom, again on the phone with 911, and they were saying, you know, find the center of her chest and start to perform CPR. Just as I was kind of finding the center of her chest, um, I felt something touch my back and our neighbor Nikki at this time had come and just jumped over Lisa and I and pushed me out of the way and just started doing CPR, which essentially saved Lisa's life. There's no way she would have survived. It felt like a dream. I didn't, I didn't even know what to think. I was terrified. Me and her bond and me and her the closest. When I saw that, I just, at first I didn't even want to believe it. When uh, the rescue team came upstairs and of course it's just complete chaos. Um, 911 let me go. Uh, they immediately pulled out the, the defibrillator and shocked her. And I just watched her whole body jump. And there was nothing. And so they did it again. And there was nothing. They hit her again. And there was nothing. And at that point, there was a gal down at Lisa's head, running, telling everybody what to do. And you could just tell, she looked up at me, and she didn't say a word, but she just shook her head no. Everybody that just kind of stopped. And I just looked that woman in the eye, and I just said, no, no. And, I know that's exactly, I just said no, and um, she said, we're gonna do it again. They shocked her again, and I don't know what happened, but they got something, some sort of response, enough for them to where they pretty much couldn't believe it. They brought her to the emergency room. She was violently shaking. They were hooking her up to machines to help her breathe. She was unstable through the whole night. Even before the doctor left that night, he said, you need to talk to your kids. You need to explain to them that their mom's not coming back. And I just told him, don't talk like that. She's coming back. 
And at that point, I was sure she was coming back because I wasn't going to let her go. So, And so the next morning when this uh, brain doctor was explaining this to Lisa's parents and myself, he was saying that he's reviewed all her scans and her brain scan and she only had brain stem activity in the back of her neck, that there was nothing in her head. So they said, even if she were to survive by some miracle, he said, even if she would survive, there wouldn't be much to her. She probably wouldn't have any memory, wouldn't be able to move. They would just be, she would have to be supported on life support. I'm a musician, so I would sit all night long and just sing to her and Throughout the night, as I said, her eyes were fluttering. But every so often, it just seemed like she would look at me for a minute, but her eyes would kind of go back away and flutter. I just wanted her with me. I kind of made a deal with God, and I just said, if you will give her to me, I'll take care of her for the rest of my life. So I went back to Lisa, and this was probably at about maybe eight or nine in the morning. And the doctor came in one more time and just said, I've got to go, I wish you the best. And then that doctor was gone. And then around 11.40, I was still sitting by Lisa's side um, and she looked at me and the nurse saw me jump up, move towards the bed. He started to, without even saying a word, he just started to do that pain test again. He pinched her leg and there was nothing. And then he moved up to her arm. And when he pinched her arm, um, her arm started like tapping. You know, at that point, that was probably one of the greatest moments of my life, aside from our marriage. She is the epitome of life. I mean, she's energy and enthusiasm. And she does, she moves quick, she talks quick. Um, you, you just can't stop her. So that's why I knew she'd come back. <laughs> They said it was like an electrical storm in my heart. From the beginning to now, the American Heart Association has been played a major role in my life. From Michael calling 911, from my son running to get my neighbor to do CPR, to the rescue squad coming to give me the AFib to the hospital. American Heart Association has been with me the whole step of the way. And it's pretty amazing. What they do is amazing. And <laughs> I can't thank them enough for everything that they've done. Can't believe it. Um, you know, it's kind of, it's hard to imagine me being that, uh, that ill and then coming back and being able to put this, these events on every year or every weekend. Um, you know, when, when I learn the stories and my family tells me how close to death I was. Well, they considered me dead. Um, it's kind of a blessing each day when I wake up, and that's how I treat it. I'll be grateful that she's still by my side. I love her to death, and I'm very proud of this woman. It doesn't matter the age. It doesn't matter your weight. It doesn't matter anything. Take care of your body. Make sure that you get checked by a doctor. You need to get checked. You know, we know the signs. If you're a mother, you know when you're feeling odd. You cannot say you don't feel it. When you're feeling out of the ordinary, get to the doctor, get the physical. It doesn't, it takes 30 minutes, but it's worth it because you're not going to do a bit of good when you're dead.